What's up, guys? Welcome to episode number one of Under the Hood Podcast. I'm Brian. My name's Frankie, and we're your host for this show. Today, we have Giovanni Ayala with us. We're going to get to know him. We're going to ask a, a few questions. A little better than we already do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How are you, bro? I'm good, bro. How are you? Good, good. We're here hustling. You know, there's no other way. we got a lot of things <laughs> coming for 2018, right? Yes, we do. A lot of things uh, going into works right now, so really excited. Well, yeah, let, let's let's get to know you. Let's get to know you today. Let's do it. Yeah, there's a few <laughs> things that I want to know that we don't know. So we're going to get to the bottom of it today. Awesome. Let's get to know the man behind the Evo. Yeah. Let's do it. So let's start right from the beginning. Okay. Where uh-huh. were you born? Uh, I was born in uh, in Los Angeles uh, over at the UCLA uh, Medical Center. Okay. And you're still in Los Angeles today, right? Yes, in the north side near uh, Pasadena, California. Cool. How was it growing up in L.A.? It was nice, um, but, you know, the area wasn't nice. <laughs> so yeah, what were some of the things there were to do? Like what made it nice or not nice? Um, or what did you like and didn't like about LA? <clears throat> the neighbors, really cool. Um, the things that, you know, all the parks, all the sceneries. You know, when you're a kid, your parents take you to all the parks. Yeah, all the, yeah, exactly. You know, you go play soccer, basketball, whatever. Yeah. You know? So it was pretty cool to have the parks so nearby. Um, you know, the view, all the scenery, man, Los Angeles. And it, Los it's Angeles. really active over there. It feels like there's a lot of people like cramped into one city, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy. It is. Yeah. Um, yeah, growing up, you know, it, it was just so many things to do around, you know, and neighbors, kids how, and all that stuff. How tall are you? <laughs> <laughs> just to divert the conversation Diver- I, real quick. I, I am six foot seven. Oh, wow. You guys hear that? Six, that's a big boy. Dude. Yeah, I yeah, know. It's yeah. a lot of milk for a little kid. <laughs> a lot of gallons of milk. <laughs> so, yeah, were you always the tallest like kid in class? Yes, I was the tallest. I was the biggest. I was the last one in the line because I was too tall. <laughs> the last one in the line. But, uh, yeah, I always was, man. What high school did you go to? I went to Hillside Baptist Academy. Okay, it's like a church school. Uh, Christian school, yeah. Okay, for sure. And I know you were you mentioned right now before we started the podcast that your parents actually came from another country. Yes. Before you guys settled in L.A. Yes, my parents came uh, from El Salvador um, in the mid '80s. Okay. Yeah. Dope, dope. Did you ever like get a chance to talk to them about like why they made the change or how come they came <coughs> over here? You, you know, a lot of times they're like looking for opportunity or escaping. Well, bad situation. Um, El Salvador uh, had a very um, bad uh, history of violence, um, gangs and stuff like that. But my dad overall and my mom, too, they just wanted to, you know, get the American dream and just come here and work yeah. and have a better life for themselves, you know. And then um, we weren't really planned, you know, my sister and I, but yeah. we just happened, you know, they got married and stuff and how many brothers and sisters do you have? I have one. Well, oh, just, it's just one you sister. two? And both of you guys were an accident? No, no. Maybe she was. <laughs> 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 no, I was planned for sure. <laughs> okay. Are you both of you tall? You know what? No. Uh, a lot of people think that my sister or myself were not related because she's only five foot two, like 110 pounds. What? <laughs> so crazy. she's she's a small girl. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let, let's get into um, like a little bit more about your car. Why? Why? Why the Evo? I've I always loved the Evo. Um, so growing up, I liked the Evo Eight and the Nine. Okay. I was in high school, middle school, high school when that car came out, and in '08, the Mitsubishi introduced the uh, Evo Ten. Um, '08 was actually my senior year in high school, and mm-hmm. I just thought I was like, man, one day I'm gonna own that car. Nice. You know. So yeah. I. I always was a fan of the Evo 8 and 9, and before they changed the body styles from the Evo 8 and 9 over to the 10, I always wanted an Evo. My cousin had one, so it was just, I was around that car, and I just fell in love with it. Yeah, I like the Evo 10s a little bit more than, like, the other body (laughs) styles. I know people are going to hate on this. (laughs) No, I prefer the Evo 10 also. Yeah, I love the body style, especially, like, yours. Was Um, that a hard decision for you to make, like, determining if you want to go with the 9 or the 10? No. You knew no. right away. I, I know. Mean. When the Evo 8 came out, a lot of people were like, why the body, you know, why did the body change or the motor and all this other stuff? But I looked at the car and I was just like, man, that car looks mean. And I got you knew it. that you wanted an Evo, like, 
some type of Evo, or was there another type of car that was that you were competing with or debating in your mind? Honestly, it my dream car has always been a Toyota Supra, um, by far. Like I, 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 by mm. far, like I love the Toyota Supra. It's my dream car, the Mark IV. And um, when I went into looking for an Evo 10, it was either that <clears throat> or the new Evo. But my parents convinced me. They're like, "Why would you buy a used car for?" such and such dollars when you, could, yeah, yeah. when you could buy a brand new one for the same yeah. price, you know, yeah. or whatever. So I kind of went like, you know what? You're right. Yeah. If I buy an older car that has problems or whatever, I'm just going to be spending money to like drive it. Yeah, and then, you know, as opposed to just going to the dealership, getting a brand new yeah. one and then just drive it off the lot, yeah. you know, no problems. But I knew right away that the Evo 10 was the car for me. Nice. You just felt like it was the right fit, that that was just what you wanted. At the time, when did you get your Evo? I got my car summer of 2012, nice. um, August 4, 2012. Nice, nice. Yeah. So, so it's been a five-year build. Or when did you finish your build? Um, man, I don't think you can ever finish a build. Mm -hmm. um, as a car enthusiast, you're always going to find something to change, something always breaks, and then you want to yeah. upgrade it. Um, I don't think you can ever finish a build, but to answer your question, I stopped really changing my car and modding it because I was very content with the way it looked and the way it performed in 2015. Okay. 2015. Yeah. So just a couple years that you, you Co feel like it's, it's right. It's on the right track now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's not, I mean, you can always do so much to it. Yeah. I think if, when you talk to a real car enthusiast, they're all, they're always going to tell you you still have so much more to do to it. Like, yeah. I look at my Evo, and then I'm like, wow, I can still do this, this, this. and It's yeah. a never-ending project. It's like a money pit. But Yeah, yeah you just this kinda... morning, too, when we were leaving, mm -hmm. and, oh, you, yeah. and you just looked at your own car, and you're like, man, I love my car. <laughs> yeah. so beautiful. Yeah, we were doing like, that. That's a good feeling when you could just, five years into having the car, yeah. you could still True. go out and look at your car every day, and you still yeah. feel the same emotions for it. And, and, you know, the thing is, I don't drive my car every day. So when I do get to drive my car, I feel like it's the first time. Yeah, like yeah. you know, it, it feels so yeah. good, you know, because I drive breaks, a van. <laughs> and it, no, it breaks a lot of necks. Because earlier when we were doing the car review, uh -huh. everybody just kept looking at it, and staring at, taking pictures. It felt like an exotic car in, in a way. I was like, "Damn, dude, what the hell?" It's I the red. This much, yeah, it's the red. It stands <laughs> out. You're trying to convince me to do red still. Yeah, I'm trying aggressive. to convince Brian to do red on his RX-7, but okay. no, I, I think it's the red and gold that yeah. just stand out. And you didn't wrap your car. You actually painted it, right? We did. So um, I grew up, um, you know, my dad is a mechanic. Okay. And he's a diesel mechanic, so I've always been around cars, <coughs> big rigs, you know, trucks and stuff like that. So I've been around my father that always does car-related stuff. So it was, you know, growing up, I, it was just a, like an automatic, mm -hmm. you know. So a lot of the work that you did on – or a lot of the work that you got done on your Evo, did you do any of the mods yourself or – Yeah, um, all the mods as far as like the full bolt-ons that we have on the car, um, any anything related to the motor and stuff, all that stuff was done at home with my dad. Nice. Um, so my dad, uh, put hands on it and, and, you know, I'm very happy with everything the way it's turned out. It, it hasn't broken down on me yet. Know, so it's, yeah. uh, it's really, really Staying strong. <laughs> what was the first mod that you did? To well, car? I, I bought my mods before I owned my car. <laughs> okay. Talk <laughs> so, about goal setting. So, right. Damn. So he was sure. So, he wasn't fucking around. Yeah. No. So it's funny because, um, well, here's the story behind Buy that. Buy the ring before you marry her, You're bro. Right, <laughs> dude. Before I... you even know the girl. <laughs> <laughs> but he here's what happened with all that. And I had already, I, I had a Honda Civic Si, and it was fully done out. I, I, I'm done up. I had the Mugen lip kit on it, Mugen wing. I had, I even changed <laughs> the color on it too, from a regular Honda Mercedes, uh, Honda Silver to a Mercedes Silver. Um, wow. so I had already, you know, been in the car game for a little bit and it was just the transition. So I, I put it in my head that I wanted to get the Evo 10 and one day I just like, you know what, it's going to happen and it's going to happen real soon. I'm going to buy some parts for this car. So I bought the intercooler. Um, I bought the intercooler pipes. I bought my intake and I bought my exhaust. <laughs> So, okay. so I had those, uh, those, so you mods. already knew that you were about to go full in. 
Man, uh, my mom was going to co-sign for me regardless, bro. <laughs> I, I have to ask this. What was your first car? My first car was a 1988 Honda CRX. Okay. Yeah. The Rexy. The Rex. <laughs> okay. I barely fit on it too, man. <laughs> I was like 17. I think when it's I got crazy it. how like. What? How old were you when you got your first car? My dad bought me that car. Oh yeah. He bought that car for me off of one of my other cousins uh, when I was 17. 17. Yep. I think I was 17. How old were you when you got your first car? I think I was like I was 16, like 16 17. and a half. Okay. Did, did both of you guys drive without a permit? Cause I, I did. I drove without a license. I drove without I a 18. license, but I had my permit. A little permit. Yeah, <laughs> no. I had the little slip. My parents are OG, man. They they did not let me touch a car without insurance or a driver's license, man. So, oh really? Yeah. You so I had to wait. I had to do it by the book, man. But it kept me out of trouble, so it's all good. Wow. Dude. Did you get into any trouble because of cars? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so but, did it keep you out of trouble for long? <laughs> yeah, but let's not go into that. <laughs> That's Damn. all. That's all we need to know. <laughs> How many warrants you got? How none, many tickets? None that speeding. I know of right now. <laughs> speeding. Yeah, tickets. everybody gets gets speeding tickets. I, I had <laughs> like three within the first year. <laughs> you know what? I'm actually I've actually been really good. I don't have a speeding ticket. Just every other kind of ticket. I, oh, bro. <laughs> I mean, I have like maybe ten or fifteen of the no front license plates. Oh shit! That's I mean, who wants to drill holes into their like nice Nobody. bumper, right? It's so ugly. I don't drive with the front license plate because it looks ugly. Yeah, like why would they make you do that? You yeah, know, true. I wouldn't do that to my Varus kit. <laughs> Threw that shit on the dash inside of the windshield, right there. Yeah, yeah. no, I didn't even have it. Oh shit! All right. Oh yeah, that's one thing I wanted to ask you is how many different types of wide body kits does Evo's like the options for an Evo, and then why did you choose the body kit that you chose? Um. Is that in general for the Evos or like Evo 10? For Evo your 10? Evo, yeah, the Evo um, 10. The Evo 10 has a couple wide body kits that have the charge speed. Um, they have, Vars has uh, a couple options, you know, the Type A that brings like a bigger diffuser or whatever in the front. And then the Type B, the one I have. I know that uh, Victory Function came out with um, a body kit too as well. Um, that was actually very SEMA, popular. right? Was that at SEMA? No, nah, Victory Function released her like that was body a new kit. Varus kit, right? Yeah, that the, was, oh, that was the new Varus. Oh yeah, you're right. So Varus released a new body kit, okay. the Type Three or whatever it is. Um, you know, just this past year at SEMA. Yeah, what's so your opinion really cool. on that new body kit? I think yours is fine, man. I actually <laughs> like yours more <laughs> yeah. than the new Varus. Um, yeah. there's a lot of mixed feelings about it because a lot of the you know the Evo owners now, you know, we all have like the same bumpers and stuff like that. So oh. maybe. Getting it, something new. Maybe it will grow onto people. I don't know. I, me personally, well, hopefully I it like grows it. onto them and they they do it, it. <laughs> and they drop fifteen racks. On <laughs> I mean, me personally, I like it. Maybe because I saw it on a red car, and I envisioned my car. You know, this is red and everything. So I just like you know, I liked it. It was cool. Okay. It was cool. So, so this is a good question right here for uh, everybody that's watching. They're probably you know you're probably driving their dream car right now and i i think that they would like to know how are you able to actually obtain that goal and buying your dream car well it's a long story so we're i mean this is a podcast to get to know each other yeah. more so let, let's let's go a little bit into debt on that I was diagnosed into debt or death. <laughs> death, death. Both. sorry, death, both you debt gotta, and exactly. death. You both. gotta go into debt. Too. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the Evo Ten, um, like I said previously, I owned a Civic Si. I was a fanboy of Hondas, and I still am. I, I love <clears> Hondas. <throat> they're they're so much fun to drive, and to own. But how did I obtain the Evo Ten? In 2012, uh, I was like. Well, in 2011, in December, I got into a really bad car accident with uh, my best friend. We were on our way to drop off an application mm -hmm. at the airport because I used to work at the airport and he needed a job or whatever. So he signed, you know, he filled out his application. He's like, yo, you want to go with me to the office? So I did. We went and this whole thing on our way over there, we were by the Staples Center. I remember like it was yesterday. Um this big truck, like a Ford F-350 diesel truck, rear-ended us. And she did a hit and run on us. And it was a four-car accident that, um, I mean, 
So when I woke up, uh, and you were driving your car, right? At no, I was actually driving my. We were in my friend's car, so we were actually listening to music. Like my hand was out of, like you know, on the shoulder thing right here, on the armrest thing with the window up, and my friend was driving, and traffic slowed down, so we were literally just listening to music, just having a good time, ha just listening to music. I'm looking, you know, this way. He's focusing on driving. And from one second to another, this truck hit us and sent us flying into a Honda Accord. The Honda Accord hit a Saturn, and that Saturn hit another Honda. Dang. And this lady Jeez. took off. Oh, so th this, run. yeah, it was a hit and run. So this Honda, it was a little hatchback. It literally looked like you stepped on a, a, a can and it crumbled. Like the door wouldn't open. So the glass actually shattered on my face and the you know the vent where the air comes out yeah it hit my face and that's where i have this mark on my on my face right here so that that isn't sleeping bag that isn't sleeping bags guys that it's was not because you're a workaholic <laughs> i am a workaholic but, <laughs> <laughs> but that's where that uh mark comes into play that um that air vent actually hit me so we were rushed uh i was rushed to verdugo medical um verdugo hills medical center um to the urgent care my friend was uh, rushed to uh, USC, you know, in county. And from there, I just started feeling sick. I got, like, the worst, like, night chills, fevers, nosebleeds. And um, come early January, uh, my dad was just sick of it. You know, he was like, bro, you've been sick for two and a half weeks, three weeks already. And it just yeah, it kept going. going worse. And then the day that he told me that, I, I remember I was wearing a gray T-shirt. And it looked like I just came out of, like, a pool. It was so soaked and wet, like it was soaked, and I, I was like, "Man, I don't, I don't feel good, Dad. You know, this, this, this sucks." So he said, "Get ready, we're gonna go to the ER." I went to the ER. They put me right into the intensive care unit because I was like at 104, Jeez. my 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 fever. So I was just burning up. They did a blood test on me and everything, and I stayed the overnight. But those results came back in, and the doctor thought that I was uh, that I was diagnosed with uh, leukemia. But that wasn't the case. Um, it was actually a lot worse. So then they did a bone marrow biopsy on me, and they found <laughs> out that I had stage four Burkitt's lymphoma cancer. Damn. So, so if you wouldn't have gone in that accident, I wouldn't be here today. Then you wouldn't have gotten checked up. Yep. And it would and have been too late. Found out, and it then it would have been too late for you to. Yes. So, um, I was that night. I was hospitalized, and I didn't see my house for seven months. Wow. I stayed there. Um, wow. I went seven through. Uh, yeah, Dang. seven months. Um, I was hospitalized there for seven months in uh, Pasadena, South Pasadena, at the Huntington Memorial Hospital. Um, later that day, they found out, you know, that I had a big tumor the size of a baseball. And uh, I was rushed into the ER, to the operating room, mm -hmm. and uh, they did surgery on me, and they took out the tumor that was on my uh, shoulder armpit area, on my right shoulder. And I went through two surgeries to get everything done, you know, the first one, then later on, and seven bone marrow biopsies. Fuck. So <laughs> how long were you on chemo for? I was on chemo the whole time I was in the hospital. So it was so for the seven entire months. seven months. I got chemo every single day, and they only gave me one day rest throughout the week. And what did that do to your body, like being on chemo for that long? Yeah. And I can only imagine the dosage that you have been that well, you were having to get. Well, they, the chemotherapy, the one that they gave me, um, it's the most aggressive. Well, I had the most aggressive cancer there is, stage 4 Burkitt's lymphoma. Um, they give you the, the dosage of uh, chemotherapy according to your weight and height. So... It was a very big amount. Of, so you were able to get a lot. Then. They gave me a lot, but it also messed me up a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, can't, I can't even begin to explain it, bro. It was such a, a painful experience that I don't wish that upon anyway. anyone, man. Not yeah. even your worst enemy, bro. Like that, that thing really just, it really beats you. And it doesn't matter how big or how strong you are, but it, it'll get you. You it's know. is it a mental game more than like a physical game or a little bit of both you know what um it's a mental game but you gotta be surrounded with people that are positive yeah um my family was very very positive my mom and dad that was actually the first time i ever saw my dad cry 
before that, I, I didn't even think was the guy when had you a, were diagnosed. When I was diagnosed, I didn't think he had a soul, man. Like, I was like, Dad, you don't cry, man. Like, you know, like, what's wrong with you, bro? Yeah. But, you know, the first time that I got, you know, the day I got diagnosed with stage four cancer, um, I saw him cry and it just broke me, man. Yeah. It was a whole different. Um, how uh, did it like? I mean, obviously, I know how you were feeling. Right. But were you just like in shock? Like, like. I just I couldn't imagine yeah. going through what you went through. Like um, that's that's got to be one of the toughest. Like your, I mean, it did, is the toughest thing that you probably have your, had like, to deal with. Heart sink, gut feeling, like. Well, you know, he, here's what it is. I was very uneducated on cancer. I didn't really know. Like I heard chemotherapy. I mean, I was young. I was 22 years old. Yeah. I was still in college. Yeah. You know, I was playing college football. Um, I had just gotten out of the LAPD. Uh, cadets so i was you know i was doing good man i was playing um college basketball too you know cal city LA I, for a little bit and, and then college football at glendale so it was i was you know in good shape i was you know okay and um when i got that news i was just kind of like what yeah you know, i was more like it was more like a what you know reaction like what do you mean i have cancer like I feel, I feel and then at the time <laughs> you probably didn't know how severe that cancer that you had was i had right? no idea what that was man like he, he told me you have stage four burkitt's lymphoma i said what the hell's lymphoma <laughs> i didn't yeah. know what it was you know yeah. i was like what is that and then when he said the word cancer it freaked me out I, I as soon as he said cancer i looked at my dad and like i i i saw like that it was serious like his soul like i don't know man it just his face reaction was just he yeah. broke down, you know. And you're so. the firstborn. Too, I'm right? the firstborn, yeah. His first so, yeah, you're like his baby boy, man. You're, yeah. You're the next yeah. one up. Yeah, so, you know, when we went through that, I remember um, the NBA playoffs were on, and it was the year that the Miami Heat lost with the uh, against the Mavericks, and I hate mm. Miami, man. <laughs> I didn't like LeBron, you know. So, I know you were watching Dirk, you know, sink these guys, man. I was like, yeah, I had no – yeah, I had no – um, uh, what do you call it? Um no hair everything fell off oh, man the, all the chemo took my hair off yeah uh, the medication the, the chemotherapy took the eyebrows off man no eyelashes i was gone man i didn't even look like this so i remember um my mom was like you know this is boring man there's not really a lot of channels or whatever she's like i'm gonna go get you a tablet so she got me that tablet and then i went on youtube and i started looking at um, um videos of the evo Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. That's All right. So I started looking at videos of the Evo. Mind you, this is four years later after I got, um, after I graduated from high school and I said, I'm going to get this Evo. Yeah. Right. So I'm sitting there and then you just hear all this like JDM, like EDM music or whatever, you know, that they those put like crazy you know, montages. Yeah. Those on crazy. YouTube. <laughs> yeah. So like I, I looked up the Evo tribute and the Evo 10 came out and then my dad's like, what are you looking at, man? Like, what are you watching, you know? And I was like, Dad, if I make it out alive from here, I'm going to buy this car. Beautiful. I was just like, That's awesome. I'm going to own this car. Then we fast forward, um, had my last bone, uh, bone marrow biopsies, my last um, cycle of chemotherapy. And in May of 2012, I, um, I was released and I yeah, beat cancer. I was nice. giving the good news. May what? May um twenty second, May twenty second of two thousand and twelve. How good did that feel, man? That was the biggest battle of my it. life. Yeah, that was the biggest battle of my life. Um, I've taken a lot of L's in life, man, and <coughs> and stuff. But I think that um, being able to to beat cancer and have a positive attitude, um, you know, it, it just it really wanted. And not not to mention, you know, I grew up in a Christian home, so I was very um you know, positive with, with God's help. You know, I yeah. prayed, yeah. um, my pastor used to come and, and, you know, come every day actually and see me and he would pray for me. he will read me the Bible, some scripture and stuff like that. So it was so nice to have so, uh, so much, um, positive energy around me the whole time. Um, even my Sunday school teacher, man, growing up, he would go every day yeah. and, and pray for me all the time. So it was so, I was so blessed to have so many people that were just, you know, you can do it. You can fight this. You can, yeah. you know, beat this battle. So once I did, I got released home and I could barely walk because of my bone marrow biopsies, you know. So I was in like 
crutches, man. I was in bed rest. I had all kind. I was beat up, man. My Jeez. body was beat up. Yeah, I think the other day you mentioned you can. You were barely cleared to yeah. start going and working out again. Yes. Like what a month or two ago? About that, yeah, oh, man. Wow. So I mean, it, it just it, cancer is a big thing, yeah, and anybody out definitely. there that's going, you know, definitely. that's watching this, and and you guys are going through this, or you have somebody in your family that's fighting this, it, be positive. Yeah, let this be an example of why you should be positive and, and let him motivate you. He made it out. Yes. He's, he's here. Yeah, he's, he's better got the than biggest ever. chip on his shoulder yeah. that you can have. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I and like I was saying, you just have to be positive. You have to yeah. have faith that everything is going to be okay. Um, it's A lot of it is a mental game. Um, I was asked if I wanted to take uh, antidepressants. Oh. Um, I was asked if uh, I needed them. And... You're I looked like, at the no, doctor and I was like, that. you know, it was very, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say I wasn't depressed because I was depressed. I battled depression and cancer at the same time. Watching my friends from my old car club be in Disneyland and car meets and, you know, having a blast, yeah. man. Just and having everyone's a great time. up here and you're down here. I mean, you caught cancer right in the prime of your life. Yeah. Your early mid 20s. That's like. It was such a brutal thing, man, to experience. So I, I fought pain and did you actually have to stop playing college yes. sports yes so you were at the time you were playing college sports and you had yes. to quit the team yes to go through this yes so um when i got diagnosed with that I, I like i was saying i was battling cancer battling all the pain the surgeries um my body and then mentally and emotionally i was battling depression mm -hmm. i was very depressed um a lot of stuff went down you know family wise and you know um just you know family friends and just watching things on the internet on facebook instagram wasn't really feeling a little envy too yeah, yeah i was just like everyone. why you know why me yeah and um my dream was to become a police officer and i was already in the police um in the process to become a police officer for lapd and i had to withdraw my application i got diagnosed three months before i was going to start the academy wow so it was um like I said, man, it was it was just a, a 360. It was a life changing, life -changing 360 experience. Uh, experience, and then um, to be able to get through all those obstacles, you know, it was great. So I mean, after I beat, you know, cancer, I was home, and one day on a Saturday, um, my mom wakes me up. I w I woke up to the smell of cooking. You know, when your mom's cooking breakfast, you can oh, smell yeah. pancakes, man, yeah, and all that yeah. stuff. I was like. Yes. Man, that smells so all good, right. you know. I was like, let me go check that out. Yeah, so you know, and my hair was just growing back. Okay. Uh, my eyebrows were back, you know, my eyelashes were back, and I was like, man, it smells good. So I got up. We, my mom was like, hey, do you have anything planned, you know, or because my cousins, I couldn't drive at the time, so I, or I barely started driving again. Like you were just so. How long were you out? I was oh. out. In May, so June, July, August, so three months. So three months after. Three months so after. You were just barely starting to get back into the swing of things? I was barely, I couldn't drive my car, man. I stalled my SI five times. I was so weak. My, my legs Can were so weak. Push down the clutch. I couldn't push, out, push down the clutch, and when I did, it would just stall. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't have the strength to keep the clutch yeah. pedal down. It was just like my legs felt shaky. Wow. So it was just like, damn, you know? So I barely started learning how to drive my car again. <laughs> the car that I drove every day, man. Like I was Jeez. just, you know, it was just like, it was Dang. so like weird. So then that day she said, we're going to go look at some cars with your dad. Do you want to go? I said, yeah, you know, cool. Cause we had previously talked about it, you know? And that day we went to a couple dealerships and I know we went to Anaheim, uh, Mitsubishi. And then we went to Puente yeah. Hills, Mitsubishi. And then the guy, and so I called the guy in Anaheim, and I was like, do you guys have this Evo 10? He said, yes, come look at it, da da da, da. We went, the car was sold. Aww. So he tried getting me for a new one, man, and an, an MR. Nah, I couldn't get an MR. Shifts. Yeah, I no. couldn't do the paddle shift. You the right choice. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like, you gotta right feel choice. that when you hit the fucking <laughs> you know? gear. Blow yeah. all go off. Yeah, so I mean, he tried getting me for that, and I was like... Bro, you did not just make me drive all the way to Anaheim, and you don't even have the car I wanted. Yeah, that's you, a salesman right there. Yeah, he did a good job. A good and then this other guy walked up, and he's like, yo, man, you should try Huntington Beach Mitsubishi. I said, where's that at? He's like, oh, it's not even. Huntington Beach. <laughs> Huntington Beach. He's like, he's like, it's not even 15, 20 minutes away from here. My dad looked at me. He was like, all right, let's go. 
So we went to Huntington Beach, and bro, they had. I wanted to get a white one, or an octane blue. Yeah, what color was it? So when I went to the dealership, I had my mindset on a white one or octane blue. My first choice was octane blue pro. They didn't have octane blue pro, so I said white. I went to the dealership. Every car, every Evo there was white. So you were like, <laughs> hold on. And <laughs> hold on. Then there was a phantom black. And I said, this, the salesman, Sam, now he's a good friend of mine. He was like, why do you want a white one? He was like, everybody and their grandma has a white one, bro. <laughs> like, he's like, get the black one. I said, nah, bro, you're going to give me a white one. And my mom was like, oh, I like the white one too. Da, 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 da. He's like, how about this? How about I wash both of them? And then, you know, you see which one you like. So they brought out the white one. And I was like, oh, yes. I'm like, this is it. And then like two minutes later, they brought out the black one. Washed, shiny. Like, I didn't even look at the white one again, bro. I was so, like, I'm getting in the so black one. the original one. paint is black yeah. on the Evo. So no. the original paint on the, the original color on the car was phantom black. Yeah. So I went with the phantom black and then. So we, you weren't even able, were you able to drive your, your car home? Yeah. Oh. So, so I drove Hell with yeah, my SI. Yeah. <laughs> so I drove. So well, you said it was that day, right? Yeah. That you couldn't yeah, so, drive your. Yeah. So then I, I oh, went. He made his way, bro. We, I was like, I'm out. driving this car. All of a sudden. Well, my, my Honda had like a really heavy clutch, you know, stage three or whatever. So this car is a stock clutch. So I was, it was a lot easier to drive. We went into the office and my parents surprised me, bro. They bought my car. Nice. So the car was actually a gift from um, my mom and dad. Um, That's sweet. And because That's awesome. back back forward into when I was fighting cancer, I told my dad I'm gonna get this car. If I, you know if if I survived and I beat cancer, I was I wanted to get this car. And he told me, if you promise not to quit your medication, if you promise to fight and get well. I'll get you this car. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. So, yeah. so I was sick. like, I looked at him and I cried, man. Yeah. And he said, because I, I, I reached a point in my life when I was fighting cancer that I was like, I'm done. Like you felt like I was just it. like, I was just like, I literally told the doctor, I was like, you know what? I he came in with the chemo, and I told him I don't want to take chemo no more. Like just let me live my life, man. I, I just. Just whatever what time I have times? left, I was like, whatever time I have left in life, wow. I'm, I'm down to die, man. Just I'm down to live my life the way it is now, and I don't want to take this chemo no more. I can't take it. My mom and dad broke down, bro. My best friend broke down. Everybody was just like, no, and I just told them. I even told the doctor and nurse, I'm like, I don't want anybody to come visit me in my room. Yeah. I don't like, not even my parents. It was just me, myself. And God. And then something hit me inside of my heart. I was like, man, what am I doing, man? I'm like, I'm 22 years old. I can beat yeah, this shit. Yeah, so yeah. I literally, the next day, you know, the nurse came in and checked on me. And then my dad came in that morning to, you know, bring me breakfast or whatever. And then the doctor came. And he was like, you know, Giovanni, what do you want to do, man? You know, I was like, I was like, dog, hook me up. Let's do it. Let's, Let's do it. it. Hook yeah. me up. Run it. Let's do it. <laughs> so he hooked and me up that to that was, chemo. And that was like your gift. And then that was that day that I said, you know what, doc, just hook me up. Give me this chemo. Give me those blood transfusions that I need to beat this thing. That same day, my dad said, if you promise not to quit, if you promise to fight this thing and you give it your best, I'm going to buy you that car. And That's then cool. I was expecting, because I wanted to get a used Evo because I was thinking, I was like, man, I can't afford a, a $800 payment or a $900 payment yeah. on an Evo or whatever it was. I'm like, I, I'll, I'll get a used one, you know, $500 payment, $400 payment, you know, it was cool. But my dad was like, nah, he, he bought that car cash, man, and just got it. Wow. So I cried. I was like, are you serious? I was like, I wasn't expecting, you know, my dad yeah. to come through and just literally... The salesman already knew. He was like, pick I don't any know color if you, you can want. top that story on why yeah. they bought the car that they bought. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was like really like, you know, that was my thing. And then why I built my car the way it did. I wanted to, you know, do something with my dad again. I wanted to build something with him. Um, I wanted to 
show him that I was very grateful and thankful for everything that he did for me. So it was really like an emotional thing for me, you know. But I think yeah. um, uh, that car has brought so many good friendships and bonds with me. There's been a lot of bumps on the road, you know, like every car enthusiast and you yeah. lose yeah. friends and you make friends, you lose friends. Um, you know, people say haters is a big thing. I, I don't really think I have haters or maybe I do. Maybe I don't. I don't really yeah. know, but I don't really care for that. Um, I'm just here to live life to the fullest. And one thing that cancer did teach me is that, you know, you learn to appreciate life a hundred times more than you know you did before yeah, i appreciate I, I, it. I wouldn't yeah, do the i, I wouldn't definitely yeah i wouldn't I do all the that. dumb stuff that i yeah. used to do in college or in high school i would never do that now <laughs> i'd be like nah bro i'm good <laughs> like i'm like i already escaped death once man i'm not yeah, trying I'm not to do it my luck. <laughs> i'm not yeah. pushing so, my luck so let's fast forward a, a little bit and let's tell the audience like what are, what are you doing now what are you know what's in the works what's the goal um the works for my car as for my car i'm done um, I don't want to – I appreciate my car the way it is. I built it to my taste and my liking. I don't have anything to prove to anyone anymore. Um, I won um, over 100 trophies with my car. Mm -hmm. um, my first trophy was at uh, Hot Import Nights. Uh, I was oh. very excited. I won first place on that. So I think that um, it, it was such a great accomplishment because all of 2012 – in 2013 i lost i didn't place anywhere so it was so like you saw the, the I, I was like what do i gotta do to win and then my car was black i was painted painted red i said you it. know i was like, i gotta paint answer it. for everything is paint, paint your car paint red. red you'll win right. trust me <laughs> but you know why you haven't won because you haven't painted your car, your car red. red one That's thing that i really want to get to um you know on all of our podcasts uh one thing that we want to show you guys the viewer is kind of you know how the what the person did to make their money to afford the car and the build on their car because we feel like that's important you know that money and cars they go hand in hand if you want your dream car and your dream build you obviously have to have some money to you know accomplish that goal so during the time that you built your car i know you put a lot of money in your car yes um what were some of the things that you were doing on a personal level like financially wise you know what were you like uh what were you working on um, what were you doing to make money to afford all the, so I, put? so at the time, uh, when I was, uh, when I got my car and I started building my car, I was working, um, at LAPD. Um, you know, I had a lot of, uh, hours and stuff like that working over there at Northeast division. So it was really cool to be able to be around police officers all the time. Sorry, not uh, Northeast, uh, Hollenbeck division. And after that, one of my uncles, told me um that there was a job opportunity in santa ana and uh it was with a chemical company and that chemical company um you know was needing people in their office and stuff like that so it was you know i said why not the pay was great um and i was i saw myself fixing my car yeah you know i was like man that check a month you know was gonna be pretty cool so i was yeah. like all right cool why not i'll commute from you know los angeles to santa Ana, orange county i was like i'll do it so i did that uh, and the the chemical company that you went to work for was it a startup were they already established or they were they were established um they were established and then that's where i learned a lot about uh chemicals and what i know now you know so it was um it was a company that um, was Christian-based as well. Um, they believed in 100% green, uh, non-toxic. Um, eco-friendly. Eco-friendly, non-toxic, um, you know, products that they had, you know, yeah. for cleaning and all kinds of stuff. I came in just like as a sales rep, and then um, I worked my way up uh, in management, and I became the vice president of marketing for that company. And I did all the marketing for them, so I used to go to local companies, um, that I used to, you know, that I was sponsored by in the car community. And oh, then, nice. That worked out. So, you know, they, they made the greasers, like mm -hmm. eco-friendly, the greasers. So I yeah. went to one of our sponsors, like Action Clutch. <laughs> um, they sponsored me with my clutch, and I've known Action Clutch for years. And they were buying the greaser for me and then, you know, all these other companies, man. Shout out to Action Clutch. Shout out to <laughs> Alex and Eric from Action Clutch. Um, you know, so that's what I was doing. The money was very good. And then um, I was able to build my dream car, you know, my, my car now. And 
And then yeah. you got heavy into marketing after that, right? Didn't that yes. kind of jumpstart you um, into getting into the marketing field, or do you feel like you've always been like a marketing like mind? I always, I always knew I wanted to stand out. I always knew that I wanted to stand out um, in the car game, and I kind of use my experience with getting, you know, talking to companies for sponsorships, you know, because eh, car car parts are expensive for an yeah, ego, man. I mean, you gotta save thing, money. One thing you guys have probably heard <laughs> that you need to know is. You don't like you all. Everybody needs to know how to market and sell yourself. Yes. Regardless of what you're doing. Absolutely. So, I mean, I, I was really good at talking to people as far as, you know, hey, you know what? Like I go to car shows and, you know, I'll put your sticker on my car and da da da, da et cetera, et cetera, you know. And then. Was that the first experience, though, where it kind of like confirmed like, OK, I'm good at this and I enjoy doing this. Yeah. And so I want to do something in this yeah so then um you know fast forward uh you know to now um i do you know i was doing a lot of marketing for companies i won't you know say which ones but you know i was um doing marketing behind a lot of the instagram pages so a lot of pages that you guys would message i was the person behind those pages (laughs) messaging you back (laughs) so um i would do a lot of marketing for a couple companies and then uh, it was funny because a lot of people that I know in the industry, a lot of friends, they'll message yeah. those pages and be like, hey, it's man, what's it? And then I wanted to say something like, bro, like, that's not how you say <laughs> this or ask for something, you know? Kind of scroll up You like, know, hey, I wanted to, but I couldn't, you know, because yeah. of confidentiality. So um, it was fun, though. But that got me into the marketing, and I did a lot of marketing for companies, like I said, you know. So yeah. I've been in the car industry for a couple of years now. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. like what Frankie was um, – asking earlier um, mm-hmm. now that we kind of know you know where you came from this your story how you got yeah. to here yeah. uh what's next for evo geo yeah what are you currently doing with us yeah well, and are there any cars in your sights in your yeah. near future to add on to your collection what am i doing now um i dropped everything um that i was doing and i brought all my focus um to tuned in tokyo so i am just like <laughs> all of you should be doing <laughs> <laughs> so i brought um uh all my attention on my um my focus to tune in tokyo um and we're happy to have you yeah, thank you so much happy. i really appreciate it geo's uh, a very well connected guy in the car community this guy's a uh, you know, we're me and Brian He's a are very, very yeah. hard worker as well. Me and Brian are like social media marketers. This guy is an all in one person marketer right here, bro. Yeah. His phone <laughs> yeah, contacts are crazy. Yeah. It's perfect. That phone fit. is very valuable, right? Yeah, very. <laughs> but um no, so I, I everything that I was doing, um, I was previously hosting car shows, um, with another company. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and we parted ways, I think uh you know, sometimes when one door closes, you know, others open. And uh, the the door that opened was uh, Tune in Tokyo. And I'm very happy and, and blessed to be here um, with you guys. So I get to come to work and hang out with these guys every single day. So yep. it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, the journey hasn't been easy, but it's been a lot of fun so far. And now we're going to start um, hosting our first car shows. Uh, well, car show. Yep. And Our first uh, car show is March 24th at the NOS Center. Yep. That's official, too. Yep. It's Just official. sign the contract for the venue today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can go to tunedintokyoevents.com to register your car today. Yep. So, um, yeah, now uh, I'm glad to be uh, one of the owners and partners with you guys for the Tune in Tokyo um events and then we have other stuff that's coming i don't want to yeah. spoil the surprises yeah. top secret you know top secret yeah. stuff that's going to be releasing maybe within the next month or two yeah. probably yep. so we're gonna that's we're very, very excited um so i'm working very hard in the office with these guys to uh bring you guys a lot of new stuff new content new um ideas of what we're going to be doing you know so it's just a lot of fun man i'm having a blast a lot of good yeah. things for 2018 absolutely yeah. a lot of good things so. uh, we running a lot of stuff. Yeah, we are. <laughs> and what about uh, what about the cars? Any cars in your sights? Your iron sights? Man, well, 
Brian's trying to convince me to get a Supra. <laughs> That's why I keep going back to it and asking him. It's like, say it, dude. Just so make Bri- it public. So that way all you guys so, can blow them hey, up and tell them to buy Comment below it. if you think he should buy a Supra. Okay. So, I want to see 50 comments at least saying buy the Supra. Okay, this, let's do this. Get this video to 10,000 views. <laughs> <laughs> this guy will buy a Supra. Okay. He might not get a Supra anytime soon. <laughs> so, so m- m- the car that, you know, Brian wants to – I mean, I want to get – again, it's my dream car. I know you guys been hearing this podcast, but the Supra has always been my dream car. But I want to get something a little different, okay. something that a lot of people don't have here. A Prius. <laughs> um, no, a lot of people have those. But my my goal is the Skyline R34. And shoot for the stars. You know, um, I want to get. If you get fall, that. you could end up in a Supra still. Yep. Eh. So <laughs> so that's wrong. so you know what I, I don't know I don't know what I don't know what to do I don't know what to get. Um, I know that within the next couple months, Tune in Tokyo will have a Supra or a Skyliner 34 in their lineup. And, uh, and we can't wait to have it. Yeah, yeah. so it's going to be really cool, you know. And Frankie's over here playing. He's scared. No. Yeah, Frankie uh, needs we, to get the NSX. Yeah, I th- gonna comment gonna below <laughs> if you think Frankie should get an NSX. 20,000 20, views. I'll buy the NSX. You heard it. 20,000 views. <laughs> he gets an NSX. 10,000. 2, I get a Supra. views. Shit. <laughs> 25,000 views. Brian buys the I8 back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't do that again. <laughs> but uh, yeah, guys, uh, that's 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 my uh, goal. The next cars that I want to get, um, it's gonna be either or. So we'll see what happens. Okay. Cool, man. Well, let's. So to so to end the show, uh, every episode, what we're gonna do is I have a question for Geo, and then Frankie's gonna have one question for Geo, and it's basically gonna just be something along the lines of you know, information to help you guys. So my question for you, Gio, is if you had to go back in time and ask your, and tell your 16-year-old self one thing of advice, what would it be? Be patient. Good things come uh, with time. Be patient. Absolutely. And my, my question is, um, who is your superhero and why does this person motivate you? My superhero, I I don't have one. I have two, and that's my parents. Okay. Um, my mom goes to work every day at five in the morning, mm-hmm. and she motivates me, uh, you know, with everything that she does. Yeah. And my dad, um, they're both my superheroes. They were my rock when I was sick, and if it wasn't for them, I would not be here today. Yeah. Um, not to mention that they're extremely supportive, and my mom is like my road dog, man. She goes yeah. to every car show. She went to I Texas know, with I me. Know. Yep. She's, Arizona. She drove to Texas. She drove in a sixteen-hour cool. drive. She drove so in. Cool. She drove sixteen hours with me, which my friend Shad and Tofu. <laughs> so that was a that was already a she drive. She helped us put up our tent. Yeah, everything. everything. Make sure so. we were hydrated. Always had water bottles on yeah. deck. <laughs> I love your mom. Dude. Yeah, she's, super she's cool. awesome. Shout out to my mom. I love Shout your mom. Out, yeah. Shout out, mama. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to so my mama. My my two superheroes would be my parents, just because um they were there for me uh from the day of birth, man, to now, and they support me so much with you guys too in this journey that we're taking, and they both know that this is not going to be an easy journey. That um we have a lot of stuff ahead of ourselves, but but we're gonna have patience. Yep. Yeah, right? patience, and uh, they have a lot of faith in us. So well, this, uh, was right, good, this was a great. Yeah. Episode. It was a pleasure having yeah, you on. Yeah, man. This was a great yeah. This was <laughs> Thank a, you so much. I hope you guys have enjoyed this podcast. I've learned a lot about Geo, and it's been motivating just to hear him speak. Yeah. All right, guys. So we'll catch you in episode two. Till next time. Peace, peace out. out. Peace out, guys. <laughs>